<laughs> Hello all, my name is Aster Sunstartle. Uh, no, 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 okay. Hello all, my name is Aster Sunstartle, and I am an artist who is a part of the Warrior Cats fandom. However, importantly for today's discussion, I haven't participated in a map, a multi-animator project for those unfamiliar, in quite some time. The main reason I'm making this video, despite being someone entirely removed from this situation, is to- well, okay, I'll be honest, I just wanted to use this new mic I got, but it's also for the purpose of documentation. The situation is mainly going down on Twitter, which as I'm sure many people are aware is becoming worse and worse UI-wise. Add to this the fact that people are very fond of deleting tweets if faced with backlash or once they've cooled down or what have you, and it can lead to very shoddy documentation of issues like this. I will do my best to present the following information in a manner that is as unbiased as humanly possible, although again, I would like to remind everyone that I have no horse in this race. Before making up your mind on this information, you should, in addition to this video, also do some of your own research. This video should never ever be used as a vehicle for harassment of any individuals involved in this situation. This is not a call-out post on anyone. At the end of the day, there have been far, far worse people online who have gotten off scot-free for things that are far worse. While I will not be pulling my punches with any information presented here, I would like to encourage viewers to walk away with a nuanced take if possible. Additionally, I have not censored any usernames since these tweets were publicly available at time of screenshotting. If you didn't want them to be documented, they shouldn't have been posted online. If claims are made without publicly available evidence to back them up, this will be noted. Please remember that a claim is not inherently untrue if there's no photo evidence for it, but it does mean that it should be taken with a grain of salt and is inherently filtered through the emotional lens of the presenter. Before we start the video, I would like to repeat again that harassment and dogpiling solves nothing. If we want to properly address these issues as a community, we need to also allow room for growth and constructive change. Harassment solves nothing. This video is not intended as an attack on any individuals, including Cheetah, simply a documentation of the events which have taken place and the wider community issues which have been brought to the forefront thus following. Alright. Cheetah Z is a 19-year-old Mexican animator and artist who has around 75,000 YouTube subscribers at time of recording. He is a prolific map host within the Warrior Cats fandom and is responsible for massive projects such as Pirate Scourge, Were Whisker, Traveler Feather, Serpent Soul, Holly Fawn, and a bunch of other maps that I'm sure people might recognize. While definitely amazingly talented as an animator, Cheetah is mostly recognized within the community for his contributions as a map host, having an impressive track record with finished projects and tending to have his map calls fully storyboarded and featuring detailed AU alternate universe, storylines, and designs. The map he was most recently hosting, called Serpent in the Stars, was going to be Cheetah's last map that he hosted before retiring from the scene. Importantly, this was his plan BEFORE the controversy began, despite many people being under the impression that he is retiring due to the backlash. As far as I can tell, the controversy mostly kicked off after this tweet from Twitter user Zephyr Arts. The tweet reads, Imagine responding to concerns with flashing lights like this. Zephyr has attached three screenshots of a YouTube comment section to the tweet. These screenshots were taken four hours after the initial comment was posted, judging by the timecode, but because the original video has since been taken down or privated, I am unable to discern when these initially happened. The initial comment is from a user by the name of Cosmix and reads as follows, aside from my minor grammatical edits. Okay, please don't delete this comment. This isn't hate towards any of the artists. I repeat, this is not hate. But I don't think it would be a good idea to have a bunch of flashing frames in a matter of seconds all of a sudden during the map. Don't get me wrong, everyone's art looks absolutely phenomenal, and I find it amazing how much collaboration goes into all of Cheetah's projects. But although this idea sounds good on paper or in text, this is kind of jarring. Like, imagine a slow-paced animation before this. How would your eyes take that? The second screenshot is of a user responding and agreeing with the points Cosmics raised, which unfortunately holds little relevance, but if you're watching this and not just listening, I will put it on screen so you can pause and read it if desired. The third screenshot depicts Cheetah's response, which is a very simple, nah, you're killing the vibe. According to Zephyr, Cheetah's comment was deleted some vague time after it was posted, which I cannot fact check but does seem believable. Some background information on this situation before we continue. This interaction took place in the comment section of a video which has since been taken down or privated. However, from the way people discuss it, I have deduced that this video is almost certainly a Serpent in the Stars collaborative map part, specifically part 127. The part reportedly featured a variety of detailed frames from different artists flashing in a very short period of time. According to YouTuber Polygonial, they put the part into an editing program and 72 separate images were shown in a span of 3 seconds. Several people pointed out that the effect was hard to look at, even for people without photosensitive issues, although those who had them were definitely impacted as well. Important to note, though, is that Cheetah did in fact have a flash warning on the map part, as documented by Zephyr Arts. The warning reads, Warning, this video contains fast movement, eye strain, and flashing images that may be harmful for photosensitive viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Lots of misinformation has been surrounding this particular fact, so I would like to emphasize it. Cheetah did have a flash warning. 
Despite this, several users have protested the presence of such images at all, raising issues of accessibility for photosensitive individuals. YouTuber and fellow animator Pine Whisker wrote the following in a YouTube comment. I understand this overbearing cloud on your shoulders from the community. I completely do, and how stressful it must seem. But stuff like this is serious and can cause a lot of issues for people who are photosensitive and have epilepsy. Coming from a person who had epilepsy and still has the side effects of it, and who thought, oh yeah, I'll be fine watching this video, and got a major headache instead after watching. As much as I appreciate the apology, the way it's been handled thus far just doesn't feel right. Polygonyal, another photosensitive member of the community, also commented on the issue in their critique. My overall issue with this is the digging in of heels when in regards to accessibility, Polygon Yell wrote. Your comments all show a commitment to what you acknowledge was a health risk. To explain why I said that the accessible version should be the main version is for the simple fact that someone watching the video might not know what they are getting into even with a warning, especially since the general Warrior Cats community skews pretty young. I didn't know I had the issues I have regarding strobes until I was an adult watching The Incredibles 2 in a dark theater. So there's a non-zero chance that even with a warning, someone who doesn't know that they have such issues will come in and possibly get hurt. Another factor is that photosensitive people have different things that they can and cannot handle, especially in regards to watching on different screen sizes or in different room lightings. Obviously, you cannot account for every single possibility, but I do think that 72 different pictures in a 3 second 24 FPS animation is a bit reckless. This does pose an interesting question. While the issue that most people are taking with Cheetah was his response to these concerns being raised, which we will get to, there is something to be said about the larger issue of flashing and strobing effects in media. Is a simple warning enough, or should it be more detailed as to what specifically might harm photosensitive viewers? Does it depend on the audience, or should there be an effort made to never have eye strain in media, even if this dampens the overall intentions of a piece? I don't think that there's any 100% correct answer here, and even if there was, I'm woefully underqualified to decide that. This situation actually reminds me a lot of the debate around accessibility in video games. Are video games obligated to be accessible? Which people do they need to be accessible for? Or which games should specifically be accessible? It's a similarly difficult question to answer, and again, I don't think we've reached a consensus. Cheetah would later go on to address this with his first community post regarding the matter. It's a quick update, and simply states, Due to rising concerns about part 127 regarding the quick flashing nature of it, we've decided to change how it will appear in the final map. We're going to turn it into a Marvel style intro. It'll be slowed down a lot to reduce flashing, be placed during the black space at 101, and the map title will be shown over it. Cosmix, the recipient of the initial response which kicked this whole thing off, would respond to the post. Hey, thanks for listening to everyone who is concerned. I think this idea is great and a whole lot better. Good luck to everyone finishing their parts, genuinely. Cheetah would respond to this comment as such. Sorry I was a little silly earlier. I was writing the high of the project and got a little lost. This apology was accepted by Cosmics, but not many others. Zephyr Arts' initial tweet would continue to blow up and spark a wave of criticism directed at Cheetah, not all of which surrounded this situation at hand. The strobing issue is not the first time Cheetah had encountered controversy within the Warrior Cats fandom. As I'm sure many might remember, he faced some criticism regarding the designs for his Tropical Scourge map, which has since been renamed to the Pirate Scourge map, for cultural insensitivities. The insensitive designs in question were redone following the criticism. He also cancelled a map by the name of Tiger Noir which featured, among other things, gun violence. This cancellation reportedly only happened following the tragic Texas Ovald shooting. Do note that dark subject matter is not foreign to Warrior Cats and remains a community debate to this day. Whether or not you think it was an appropriate topic, keep in mind that Cheetah is in no way unique in hosting a dark or triggering map. It does still showcase that there is a precedent for his maps to have these sorts of accessibility issues, though again, he did take it down. The obvious and evident complaint that has been surfacing alongside the photosensitivity issues is his treatment of the people who work on his projects and his impact on Warrior Cats maps as a whole. Most prominently, a Twitter thread by artist and animator Ofuckity details their feelings and experiences regarding Cheetah. Cheetah has left me nothing but massive self-esteem issues when it comes to my artwork, they wrote. I can never be able to see my artwork the same after working on those projects, and I hate to see multiple others feel the same and be stepped on as well. Apologize for what you did. They would go on to elaborate, claiming, I remember days where I was sick to the point I couldn't walk and getting yelled at for not working fast enough in your projects despite being ghosted. I cannot blame Sparrow it for trying their best during these moments. Only you. Please note that Ofuckity did not provide any screenshots of these alleged conversations, although that does not mean that they do not exist. They continue, You know how it feels to be replaced when you apply for a collab part? Having your collab partner get in but you get replaced with bigger names and titles? I have massive issues with imposter syndrome now. Not seeing my art is worthy enough. Because of you. Worst part was that Cheetah never told me I was switched out for someone else. They just replaced me. I cannot speak on everyone's experiences, but I know Cheetah has replaced me not once, but twice. Once for Sharpen Your Teeth and the other for Coda. Coda, I was sick to the point I couldn't walk nor eat. My partner ghosted me the whole week and Cheetah kicked me for it instead. 
Now, obviously, given the lack of screenshots here, these are just allegations. That doesn't diminish Ofakidi's claims, but it does mean that we cannot verify how Cheetah conducted himself in these interactions. While other first-hand accounts of mistreatment on maps are hard to come by, critiques of Cheetah's general method of hosting were plentiful. Twitter user KittyDisc wrote, Nobody's really talking about the fact that Cheetah has given bad vibes from the beginning with his unreasonable deadlines for fully polished map parts. He's profiting off of a bunch of kids' labor. Twitter user NeatSocks expressed a similar sentiment, writing, Cheetah is very frustrating because why does a map need production managers and effect technicians? His maps are always so confusing to watch because of how elaborate the plot is and how it strays away from canon. I don't want to read a script so I can understand what's happening. Maps used to be about having fun, but now it's like they're only being made to produce content and get views. What happened to having fun? While smaller, this particular sentiment has been floating around for a long time. On WC Confessions, an anonymous Warrior Cats discourse blog hosted on Tumblr, Cheetah was a popular discussion topic for quite a while. One anonymous submission states, I was an animator on Tiger Noir and am still a part of Cheetah's map server. I gotta say, I'm literally so tired of him and his maps. Serpent Soul has three installations now? For real? Like in his attempt to recreate the Marvel Cinematic Universe with the parallel effect of extremely high polished yet abysmal storytelling squashing out smaller creators, he's making the map about Cheetah rather than any meaningful exploration of canon characters. The animators are talented and fantastic but are stuck boosting up someone else's ego. Drives me insane seeing everyone praise Cheetah instead of, like, the actual talent that makes his fame happen. Another anonymous submission regarding the topic, allegedly from the same user, would later be posted. It reads, Hi, it's the original Cheetah animator Anon again, and so sorry for kicking off drama then dipping for days. However, this is gonna get long. Cheetah's entire work model screams offloading work onto other people so you can produce as much possible in the shortest amount of time. Weekend maps, 200 part maps with three collaborators on each part, and trailers for his maps to generate as much hype as possible for them. What these create is hundreds of videos about the new Cheetah Z map, thus boosting Cheetah in the algorithm massively. To break it down, each of the 200 map part creators will post a video with the map title in it, pushing the topic out to as many people as possible. The trailer is there for the existing subs, making sure they watch at the premiere and again putting the X Cheetah Z map topic as something that anyone who vaguely likes maps needs to watch right now. Premiere happens, everyone watches, maybe skims the part playlist, and subscribes to Cheetah. Because this happens every three weeks, it's a consistent stream of content running back to him. It's the exact same content farming that Drakenator did. The same thing happens to hype the animators for the next big project in the server. I think it was Hollyfawn that had a 10 day at everyone spree with like a scavenger hunt to tease that the next project was coming. Prepare to apply! To add on to it, he literally doesn't even do the storyboarding himself. He recruits like five other people to do it and Cheetah will help out. This is why the visual language is as disjointed as it is, and no hate towards the board artist. It's just that everyone has different styles and Cheetah isn't exactly there to unify it aside from some meaningless symbols. Does anyone actually know what Hawkstorm's wings mean? Anyone? In all, the focus is not on the animator when it comes to a Cheetah map from what I've noticed. It is quite literally all about Cheetah, and he doesn't do anything but promote that with his content creation style and how he interacts with the people that work for him. Downright disheartening, and this style becoming fairly mainstream and his fans mirroring it is a very large part of why I'm packing my bags from the Warriors animation scene. Once again, sorry about the length, but that Anon did drive me mildly berserk and I needed to delve a bit deeper into my stance. So. Obviously, that's a lot, with some unverifiable information such as the Holly Fawn scavenger hunt, though again, unverifiable information doesn't necessarily mean untrue, and we can't exactly hold one person accountable for quote-unquote ruining the Warrior Cats map scene. But this post is a very good microcosm of the sorts of attitudes that people have started to take on towards Cheetah following this controversy. Another anonymous submission on the WC Confessions blog corroborates, as someone who has been on Cheetah's projects, I completely agree with that Anon. People are allowed to like the maps and participating in them. I don't care, but I'm shocked how more people don't take issue with this, especially since Cheetah is now asking for donations just for map lore information, with a large following of children too, not even art commissions. Everyone in the server is pretty much working for him. You can say it's volunteer-based as much as you want, but it doesn't address the social pressures people feel to keep up with something that'll get you clout. I've hosted maps in the past, and I've noticed how the Cheetah Cinematic Universe has starved the map ecosystem. It was a community where you join maps and then create your own map, and in turn, those people that made the projects you joined would join your projects. Instead, everything now revolves around how Cheetah runs his maps. When people who join your maps are also on a Cheetah map, it won't matter when your deadline is, the Cheetah project always gets priority. Everyone is always working on something in the Cheetah server, and no one has time to work on anything else. It's really rough when you are trying to get your own project done, and backups are silent. That or your participants are ghosting you while being active in the Cheetah server after multiple announcements. 
Cheetah projects are essentially made by other people at this point working for his gain. All Cheetah is now is the guy with ideas. Everyone else is working for him and making set designs, storyboards, character designs, props, call out, thumbnails, etc. Hollyfawn wasn't even fully scripted. It's quite literally a studio, which wouldn't be a problem if people were compensated for their time. A finished map in the past was that compensation, but for huge projects like these that have a whole pre-production stage, it's insane that a single person has hundreds of people literally working for him like this. And if someone drops, there's always someone to pick up. You are literally just a worker. It doesn't feel right. If you have a part that's not a huge story, you just don't matter. You get the project finished, but all these maps rely on the huge dramatic parts with insane animation. That's how they get the excitement up and views in. And these parts are usually given infinite amounts of time to finish without collaborating as well. I don't have any issue with people who do use their talents to make some great parts, my issue is just with Cheetah and the rest of the council. How things are ran and how so many small things contribute to a greater issue here of circling people around you for your own gain. Just because people also like your stories doesn't make it less insane. Maps work as a small group project, not as a studio. If this is how you run things, it should be promoted more as something like Warrior Cats Animated or something similar. Because now everyone is trying to follow the Cheetah model and it just does not work. This hardly scratches the surface. People can do as they please, but we can't pretend like it isn't suffocating the rest of the community. Of course, not everyone is so negative towards Cheetah. The Twitter thread which perhaps provided the best counter to much of the criticism was posted by Twitter artist and YouTuber Fried Tiger. In it, he states, Okay, I'm gonna say it. The situation about Cheetah has gone from a real discussion about accessibility to everyone airing their dislikes about his projects. Why does a map need special effects artists? The plots are so confusing. It's so elitist. Shut up. You jump on any chance to trash talk artists you love because now you can go, aha, I knew there was a reason I was mildly annoyed by them. It's really not a good look for you. Turning a conversation about accessibility and ableism into, I'm glad he's retiring so his AUs can be public domain. Anyways, if I see any white people parading Serpent Soul around as theirs and claiming it doesn't belong to Cheetah anymore, I'm hitting you with a baseball bat. Just saying, maybe keep the discussion on what matters rather than rolling in the drama for points. You all disrespect the countless artists who worked on Cheetah's projects. Screw you for that. There are real issues to be talked about here, but wailing that you didn't get in because a more popular artist did instead and complaining that the projects were too confusing anyways is really not it. This thread got a lot of support from the community. Another similar thread by Bad Miracle, another artist, animator, and YouTuber, was also well received. In it, he writes, One last thing. Did Cheetah do wrong? Yes. But people have done worse, and you hardly hold them to the same standards as my point. You are comparing a teenager to Draconator, and for what? You are threatening a teenager, and for what? That's my point. You'll see a popular artist get called out for vehement racism, and their replies will be a cesspool of death threats and racism and violence, but because you like their art, you won't care. You'll ignore it because it doesn't concern you. But when suddenly it's an artist you didn't like before but have a reason to dislike now, which is strange for a teenager who is just trying to create culturally themed content, you blow up. That's my point. The double standard and bias in this fandom is staggering and disgusting, and if you're going to blow up on an artist like this, you'd better make sure you hear out the hundreds of victims of racism when they tell you your favorite artist is a racist. Criticism is to be had when an unsavory comment is made, I hate what was said, but threatening a boy when he has a single misstep and refusing to fight for victims of racism is a very deliberate choice and we see it. We see you. Bad Miracle makes the pertinent point that yes, people in the Warriors fandom have gotten away with far worse with far less backlash. It does make one wonder if the intensity of this backlash has maybe a little bit to do with the fact that Cheetah isn't white. The other big thing, aside from a perhaps alongside the alleged mistreatment of artists, is this comment on Cheetah's post by Cheetah's longtime collaborator and presumably former friend Sparrowit. It reads, I can't take this anymore. If you care about me, you take my name out of this post and anywhere else it appears. I can't be on these projects. I don't stand by your words or actions, and I'm sick of keeping silent for the sake of some cat animations. The criticisms you receive are true. It's just always been me who bears the brunt of it. I've deleted so many of my social medias because of you. I've had panic attacks over these projects. I've been to counseling. I've been messaged so many people's personal complaints about you like I control you or something. Just God, please think about all of the innocent people who just wanted to help on a cool animation project and are now having their real names and careers associated with this crap and have to try desperately to dig themselves out of the hole. All of you. I know you're seeing this. I know this hurts you, but I'm checking into the ER after this and probably not coming back to this or any Sparrowhead accounts ever. I need help to not be such a pushover, I know that. I know I let this happen to myself. I'm going to go and get the help I need and pray that you will too and get off social media and stop hurting yourself and others. I gave two years of my life to this, hoping to get some cool professional projects to put on my resume, but all I got was being an impulsive teens manager. Cheetah would make a final community post on the matter on September 12th. I'm retiring from hosting maps. 
I've been disconnected from the community lately, which has led to my lack of consideration for the community's standards. Last week, my two comments made the community feel like their genuine concerns for safety were being unheard, and I want to apologize for that. I understand that my words alone cannot heal the damage done, regardless of intentions. Therefore, I want to take decisive actions to better myself and the community which surrounds me. I never expected this project to get as popular or big as it is now. As a teenager with a full-time course load, a job, and a life, this project became a full-time volunteer job on its own, and I have had to continually lean on others to volunteer to help with production management. The community's increasing expectations to hold me accountable as an individual have become unsustainable. Members within the community have been bothering other production managers over my behavior when not everyone on the project agrees with it or has any say over what I do as an individual. Often, I see projects held to the same standards and expectations as a paid corporation or business. These projects, at the end of the day, are fruitions of volunteers' passion and made in our spare time, not as full-time jobs. We should be striving to create an accessible and collaborative community, but holding it and host to the standards of a paid industry is not fair. I would like to apologize to the hundreds of participants of the MAPS if they have ever felt uncomfortable or misrepresented by me. That was not my intent. I'll reiterate that this is a group and community project, and while I contributed to them, the projects are still a collaborative effort and they should belong to the community. The Serpent and the Stars will be re-hosted by Nettlefang, Lettuce Bettis, and Pixel Moss. I plan on finishing my parts within the project as well as explainer videos. As of now, details are up in the air while we begin a transition from team to team. Please know that we will do our best to finish the project. Serpent in the Stars is not cancelled, it has just been handed to our production managers who have already been working behind the scenes to organize this project. Regarding concerns about the soul part, the production managers are currently in contact with the consultant on photosensitivity and in addition to previously announced changes are using guidelines provided for TV to help us make the entire map accessible and safe for our audience. Additionally, the final map will have content warnings. Thank you everyone for your patience with us during the switch and for caring about this project to bring up concerns to us. To wrap up this documentation of the Cheetah Z incidents, I would like to leave everyone with a few tweets. From Twitter user Senswu, referring to someone saying that they knew Cheetah had bad vibes the whole time. Warrior Cats community, can we not do this every time we have an issue with someone? This happens every time and now it's happening with Cheetah. Proudly flaunting that you knew someone had bad vibes is not the take you think it is. There are multiple examples where bad vibes were never mentioned about animators who I will not name because I will not be comparing their worst actions to this situation. If you're just waiting on every person who gave bad vibes to get an actual reason to dislike them, please change and grow as a person because it says more about your judgmentalness than about the person you're spatting about. From Twitter user Metallic Rosefinch, With the ongoing situation with Cheetah, I think it's important to remember that this isn't a Cheetah is bad and you shouldn't support him, but rather a this shouldn't have been going on for as long as it did and we need to prevent it from happening again. I do not believe Cheetah is a bad person, and that mindset is a very black and white view of this. I think instead, we need to stop putting people on giant pedestals and acknowledge that everyone is capable of messing up and not being perfect. And by that, I mean not harassing people who give out criticism or bring up concerns. For too long, the slightest bit of concern was met with Cheetah's friends and fans defending him and speaking on his behalf while he doesn't say much by himself. It felt like watching the work of a PR team. By constantly making excuses and not actually doing anything about crunch and the mistreatment of participants, it got so bad that a longtime helper for these maps had to check into the ER. Stop putting other people on a pedestal. Stop expecting way too much work to be put into a free, unpaid project. Let maps be fun again without the stress that comes from perfectionism. And finally, a meme from Twitter user KittyPeb, which somehow summed all of this up far better than I ever could have. The Warrior Cats fandom is not uniquely terrible at handling things like this. Everyone falls prey to Twitter telephone at some point in their life, and it's hard to criticize people for medium infractions without sweeping it under the rug or blowing their entire life up. Still, I chose to make this video partially because I think this demonstrates a lot of issues with the fandom at the same time. Warrior Cats has ableism problems, racism problems, problems with popularity and artist mistreatment and rumor spreading and most everything else shown throughout this video. But the other reason is because I think that more than any other recent situation on Twitter concerning Warrior Cats, this one confused people. Countless, countless tweets of people asking, so what's going on with Cheetah Z? What's up? What do you do? And the way that people post on here is by vague tweeting. Some of these posts, which were decidedly about the situation, didn't even mention Cheetah by name, and that can be really frustrating if you're a person like me, who's nosy, or if you're a person who has moral principles and doesn't just follow the crowd without evidence. I mean, look at how people talk about Draconator. Someone censored their name in an anonymous blog post. If you're just coming into the fandom, how are you supposed to know these things? If you're going to gossip about others, do it with your full chest and not a meek little timid dance. With the advent of Web3 and Elon Musk's terrible awful design decisions, it is becoming harder and harder to track these sorts of things down, which is why I think more effort needs to be spent on documenting them. 
I'm really sorry if this video seems insensitive. I know I have, as previously stated, no horse in this race, not even a pony, and these topics are pretty serious. But five years from now, I'm sure someone is going to mention this in a 20 tweet thread about some interpersonal conflict that should have stayed in the DMs, and they're going to get something wrong, and it'll turn into a game of he said, she said, and no one will have any screenshots the whole time. A YouTube video is far more permanent and visible than a Twitter thread or even a Google document. So here it is, my recap of the whole Cheetah Z thing. If you'd like to see screenshots that I took but didn't end up using in this video, some of which contain stuff that I didn't get to here, because this really isn't a call out, it's about this specific situation, and digging up other stuff about Cheetah seemed in poor taste, I've left a link to a stash file in the description. I encourage people to save those images if you want to, because the more devices they're on, the more permanent and discoverable they are. Let's push for better documentation of fleeting Twitter discourses. I know this is such a weird takeaway from a video like this. Improve the Warrior Cats community. And our documentations of Twitter drama. Thank you. This has been Aster Sunstartle. Please subscribe. I'm on my knees. My last animation meme flopped. I worked really hard on it. And I'm disabled. And I'm a college student. And I'm not broke yet. But I'm getting there. And I'm only 18. And I don't usually get into Twitter drama. Knock on wood. And no, no, no. Don't click off. Don't do it. Don't do this to me.